Hello again and welcome back to all of my subscribers and if you're not a subscriber what's wrong with you? Press the button. Right, today I'm revisiting the emulator that I'm writing. I think this is the fourth edition of this. Um, and before I did say that what I was going to do was I was going to um, break up the program into uh, a less monolithic huge script and that's what I've done so I've put the emulator new and I've split out the CLI the emulator and um, the logging utility now having said that I do have here in my hard drive for the emulator the emulator thinks this is its hard drive an absolute ton of test programs that I had been running on the emulator but let me just show you how you have to break this up um, if you're not familiar with doing this in Python which I wasn't um, the first thing you need to do is you need to create one of these uh, init files in a subdirectory and now that just you just touch this file this is just an empty file and it just uses the file name um, so you just create an empty file with this name in the subdirectory where you're going to put your class so if we um, if I show you the structure first <coughs> and then this is the emulator so if we if we look down here it's in this subdirectory and there is the class so this is the class for the emulator um, so I split out all of the emulator class into its own file and pulled that all out then the CLI that is also been pulled out and made separate and then I created a logging file in the utilities area um, just so I could add other utilities if needs be and then at the top is your main uh, program that imports these now I had a bit of trouble with this but basically you put the subdirectory and then the class uh, sorry the the thing you want to import from the class uh, so this is how that works and then the, from the utils directory I just import logger and then the, the the runs the same basically it creates the emulator it creates the CLI interface and then off you go now at the um, at the moment I have to say that this is basically broken uh, it's not working well it, won't, it is, does work but it won't load the files um, so you it does see it and you you know you can look at the help and all of that but it won't actually run a program because I've made a significant amount of changes uh, and I'll show you that and the reason why in a minute but uh, what I was uh, doing before um, you can see in the log files that basically it was running the program counter running the effects and fetch and execute functions uh, doing the instructions and then so there's a lot of debugging information I put in here to tell me you know uh, it's going to load 32 into register 0 and it did and where is the stack pointer and where is the program counter and what are the flag settings and all of that so all of that is in there and then uh, this is a jump to FF which basically ends the program um, this is how my emulator works and so uh, that is basically it um, and how it's run now the reason that it's not working is because I've been making a significant amount of changes in the emulator in order to support uh, the creation of an assembler and what has happened uh, as I create the assembler I am learning more and more and more about 
the way that the emulator needs to handle these instructions. And also I'm having to make design decisions around um, the assembly language instructions that I'm supporting. Like, do I support an immediate value with a jump or will I only support labels or, you know, all of those sorts of decisions about the assembly language that you're going to support and how you're going to support it. And then so what's happened is as I have, you know, realized that oh, I want to support, um, you know, this functionality in the store data, for example, then I would come into the emulator and make the change. And but because I've been focused on the uh, assembler rather than the emulator, uh, some of these changes have broken the emulator. So I'm going to need to go back and retest all of that. So, you know, it's a it's a long process, but this is what I've been doing. Now, before I move on to show you the compiler, I want to just take a moment to say that I'm not sponsored and I don't get any revenue from advertisements. And I would really appreciate it if you could have a look at my books. Um, I am an author and I write books. I have a blog if you're interested. Uh, uh, rdearman.org uh, where I not only have my latest videos but also you know um, a blogging page um, just talking about well most recently I've been talking about the history of sort of computers and how they uh, you know mechanical calculators have sh shown the way to uh, how to make a computer um, but if you were interested in my books, uh, you can go to XGI Publishing, and I just want to highlight this one, which is 30 Minute Things. And um, I wrote this one basically to show you a method I use to basically just brainstorm uh, on a given topic and to try and uh, understand and come up with ideas for self improvement or what I'm going to do, uh, you know how to do YouTube content or, you know, think about whatever uh, in your life that you need to just come up with a massive plan of action and just do a huge brain dump of all of the stuff that you need to do or might need to do or could help you, then this book shows you how to do it. So uh, you, if you like that sort of thing, it's available on Amazon and on Kobo. Uh, but you can get to the links from my uh, publishing site. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's go back to the compiler. Now, the compiler that I've been working on is here and it is huge. Now, I had um, a lot of issues with this and uh, I, I'm actually on version seven because I have literally scrapped and rewritten this almost seven times in total. Well, in fact, exactly seven times in total. Uh, a lot of the time, my initial thoughts of how to parse the file and things didn't work out. So I've changed all of that. I got one that I'm happy with, um, you know, how to parse the file. And then I've had issues around, well, okay, how do I check for immediates? Do I support binaries, decimal, all of that sort of stuff. And then directives, which I have not implemented yet. But I plan to have uh, like global text dot data, you know, org um, and ASCII text, all that sort of stuff. Um, I plan to support in the compiler that I wrote in Rust. I didn't do any of these. It was only just basic instructions. So this one's a mo lot more complicated and a lot more thorough. Um, so then I basically iterate through all the lines and then uh, depending on what it is, I call the appropriate uh, function to deal with the process. Now, initially I was looking at the number of operands, but in the end I decided to look at the opcode and split it into two groups, which is basically ones that change or affect registers and then others that don't actually do any changes to the registers. So although the push and pop are all about registers, they don't actually change the value of the register. 
And so I've, I've been troubleshooting my way through all of that and adding and implementing all of this as I go and making sure that it all works. Now, in order to test all of this, I have written a significant amount of test cases. Um, so for example, I have test cases for the LI instruction, the load instructions, the store instructions, the add instructions, and then uh, I just take a subset of this. So for example, here I'm doing shift um, left. So I'm using the shift left instructions here uh, and then I just run these tests through my uh, assembler. which I'll show you in a minute, but basically, uh, you know, I'm at the point where I can write out programs. Now I do have, I have written a sample that uses all of the um, instructions that I plan to use in addition to all of the test cases. So I'm working my way through all of the test cases and I've basically got down to the point of shift left and right uh, where I'm just running these tests here, but push and pop don't work because I'm actually going to have to rewrite the emulator to deal with push and pop the way that I want. And one of the things that I did um, in the emulator uh, is that I go back to the emulator. Um, I actually added in um, another register. Now it was just R0 through 3, but I've decided to add a link register. And the idea here is that the link register, if you're aware of any sort of assembly program, is when you jump to a subroutine, it pushes your current location before you jump into the link register. And that allows the subroutine to just go back to the link register and effectively take you back to where you were when you jumped. And so I need to implement that. And the way that I'm planning to implement this is like this. So it jumps to the subroutine and then I pop the link register and I will change the pop function in the emulator to return the program to that, uh, re rather return the program counter to the address that's in here. That's my plan at the moment. So it does. So as I'm doing the assembly language and and running through the test cases and trying to work out what I'm going to support in the language, that feeds into the emulator, and so uh, you know that changes me back to. Um, using it. So if I just quickly whip back here, um, if I run the, uh, let's just do this. So LD test is just the shift right and left. And it successfully does that. So what it's telling me is what operands were passed. So R1 and R2. Uh, what the opcode is and then it outputs the machine language and then weirdly I'm at the point now where I can understand this like just by looking at it I don't really need um, to interpret it um, but I use these sets of tests to work out if it's working and then I can use it now weirdly I, I do understand these I can look at it my when I first started programming a long time ago, I had a friend of mine named Ken who used to work as a dump cracker on tandem mainframes. And he told me that as a dump cracker, what would happen is the mainframe would core dump when there was a problem. But it didn't write a file to a hard drive or anything. It literally printed ones and zeros to these massive uh, dot matrix printers with this green and white paper feed, you know, these huge mile long bits of paper. And he used to just sit in the break room, smoking a cigarette, 
drinking his coffee and looking at all of these ones and zeros until he found the problem. And I thought he was lying. I didn't think anybody could just look at sort of ones and zeros in a row and work out what was happening. But in fact, with a lot of practice, you can do it. <laughs> and so, uh, in fact, that one's wrong. But anyway, um, so that is how I'm doing this at the moment. And I'm just working through all of my test cases and all of the directives um, one by one, one at a time. Now, this one will fail if I do run this one um, because it's failing on the, uh, it, the jump is working. Where did we get to here? But it fails on the label. Now, this is probably because of my implementation in the assembler rather than anything to do with the emulator but I have had to make changes to yeah so you can see it fails here on the label I have had make changes for the jump instruction so that that works with labels I suspect I need to make more changes to the branch equal or not equal in the assembler uh, I have had to make some changes in the emulator for the jump um, branch if equal and branch not equal. Um, but this is failing because of the assembler. But anyway, so I've just basically worked my way through all of these again uh, and see how it goes. In fact, I know this one won't work because I've changed the syntax of this. So that now, you, to do a comparison, you only use two operands. And then it'll, it'll store everything in R0. But that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm just working my way through all of this one bit at a time. Hopefully, um, in the next video, if you, you know, like and subscribe and share this video around, when, when we get to the next video, I'll show you the emulator working and I will have written a simple um, assembly language program, hopefully with directives, um, you know, not just the straightforward stuff, but hopefully with the directives as well. Uh, but thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this sort of thing. Let me know in the comments if you have ever been a tandem dump cracker and you understand this sort of binary stuff as well. Uh, let me know if you're doing an emulator and how you implemented it. If you got any tips or tricks around how to write an assembler in Python, I would, you know, I'd appreciate that as well. So comment away and I will see you next time.